Neeskins, we sit here in the historic cottage at the end of an era because sadly your time at Fulham has come to an end. Yeah, my time has come to an end. Um, honestly, I didn't see it coming because there were so many um, talks between my side and the club, but finally we couldn't find an agreement. So that's it. I'm off now. I mean, it's seven years you've been with us, which in modern football is a very long time. Is it going to be weird not coming into Motspur Park every day? It's going to be very, very weird. And uh, yeah, honestly, I'm, uh, I'm a bit sad to leave this football club because through the time it became a, a big family and all my kids, they only seen me playing for Fulham. Okay, the alone in Middlesbrough, but mainly Fulham, and uh, even for them, it's going to be very, very tough. I, I, going back seven years, I remember doing a, a post-match interview with you at Ewood Park after your debut. Um, it's been a summer ride since then, hasn't it? Yeah, but uh, the time has been flying. You know, I, I, I just feel that it's not been seven years, like more like three years, really. But it is what it is. But do you think that shows how good a time you've had? Because obviously it's been ups and downs, in and out of the team, promotions, relegations, but the fact it's gone that quickly for you hopefully means you've enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Every, I enjoyed every single bit of uh, my journey as a Fulham player, honestly. Like even uh, in the bad moment, there were always positive things, you know. Um, we had uh, an amazing um, changing room. So we were, also, we were always... Um, stick together and uh, that made it very, very good for all the players, I think. There's only five players who have won promotion with Fulham three times. You're one of them. That's pretty special, right? That's very, very special. That's very, very special, but the, was, the latest one was the, the best, I'll say, because we, went, we finished first and, uh, you know, we didn't have to, to stress ourselves. <laughs> Yeah, going back to the first promotion, I'm speaking to you since you've said how you almost feel like you didn't deserve to enjoy it because you didn't play as much as you'd like. But then the second one under Scott, you scored some important goals in the playoffs. And then the season you just mentioned, you were part of a prolific front line. So did that make those extra special after how you felt about the first one? Exactly. Like you said, for the first, uh, for the first one, OK, I played like uh, 20 few games, I think. And uh, I didn't feel really part of this promotion because, you know, in the key games, I was not there. I was not involved or, you know, I was not playing. Uh, the second promotion toward the beginning, uh, from the beginning, I was, I've not been involved that much, but toward the end, I was in the, in the main players and, you know, so I felt like I was part of it. And the last one was the, from the beginning till the end, I was there. So that's why. And, also, the fact that we finished first, then we had this trophy. This is my first trophy. So, yeah, that's why, was, uh, that's why it was uh, so special. So, going back to last season, you start five of the first six Premier League matches. You start getting a few assists. Um, and then out of nowhere, just completely innocuous trainer session, pop goes the Achilles. Yeah. I mean, having finally been given a good run in the Premier League, being able to show your talents at the highest level, that must have just felt so cruel. No, honestly, uh, it was so good and it was a, a good challenge for me to prove myself that I can still play a part in this team in the Premier League because uh, so far I've never been really given a chance. So now I could show to people what I was uh, cap capable of and uh, having this uh, injury at that time, that was very, very bad uh, for me and knowing my situation with my contract and stuff. So it was not the, the ideal, but I kept my positive mind and uh, I knew that I would have to work even harder to come back the earliest possible and uh, the, in the best shape possible. So I did what I had to do and uh, I'm still thankful for, for, the, for the, the season and uh, I'll still keep uh, some positive uh, about that season. Yeah, and of course, with an Achilles being such a serious injury and you mentioned the contract situation, there were naturally some concerns. We might not see you again in a Fulham shirt. So how nice was it to come back and be in the match day squad again for I think it was the last eight games? Wasn't no, it? honestly, for the first game, it was, uh, it was here. Uh, when I see my name on the, 
on the match squad le list, I was like, wow. And I was like, uh, just thinking about what I went through from the uh, injury till when I got picked for, for the game. And uh, I was so happy, you know, I was so, so happy because, you know, this, with this injury, usually you're between six and nine months. I came back after five months to play a game, you know training after like four months something so yeah yeah and that game where you came off the bench when you get substituted on and Ivan reads out your name the noise the home fans made it it was like you'd scored a 90th minute win or something it was that that must have just meant so much to you no honestly that was so I enjoyed that moment honestly I didn't show it because I need to keep to keep some you know charisma right but I was like wow all of that for me <laughs> no but honestly they love that uh, they love been giving me since my first few days here. And honestly, I'll never thank them enough because you know there is. I don't know what to 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 say or to do to to just say thank you. You know, thank you is not enough. So but it always feels like you've been very close to them because I think you you do well to show your personality sort of on the pitch, yes, but on your social media and things like that. And I think that brings a closeness with the fans. Yeah, but you know me, I'm like, I'm simple and I'm straight. I love life. I, li I love to, to have like some banters with my friends and stuff. So that's how I am. And through my social media, that's the way I am too. You know, you're not going to see me having some, uh, you know, it's, I'm not like this. I'll just live my life like in the simple way and in, in the funny way I, I do. You played for Fulham 160 times. You scored 24 goals. What's your favorite game? What's your favorite Fulham goal? My favorite game. My favorite game. What's to choose from, huh? To, to be fair, to pick <laughs> to pick one game out of 160 games is hard. But wait, I'll say. Maybe Millwall away, maybe. 3 now. Yeah. No, not 3 now. It was us. Uh, no, what did I do in that game? <laughs> I assisted Fabio last season. Oh, but the title winning season. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that game. I had a bit of fun that game. Okay. Yeah. I remember Frank and Gisa having fun in that game as well. Yeah, Frank. That was <laughs> his last game, no? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, my guy. <laughs> Go. Oh, oh, which, you know which one I'm thinking about? The volley, like, uh, top bin. Right? Which one was it? It's Tosin who gave me the assist, but he oh, didn't mean it. Bristol City? Yeah, Bristol. Oh, that was Bristol City, yeah. Tosin didn't mean it, though. He never meant nothing, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, your time at Fulham, it's been about so much more than just what you've achieved on the pitch. Um, and in all my time doing this job, I don't think I've ever met a footballer that's as happy as you. Now, is that positive frame of mind something you work on? It just comes to completely naturally to you? No, it's just natural, you know. I think uh, in my family, we all are that. We love having, sharing good moments and, you know, life is uh, too hard to, to always, always be sad and uh, to be like only yourself you need to, to share with people to, you know, just enjoy uh, your time that you're spending on this earth and, you know, because when you'll be gone, you're gone. And it's coming back, so that's how. That's why I'm always like I don't worry about things. I just live my life. And speaking of family, you mentioned your girls earlier. All they've ever known is Fulham. Are they two Fulham fans for life now? I think so. I think so. They want. They want to live here. So <laughs> you know, I think they'll be around. And what about yourself? We're going to hopefully see you back at the cottage in the not too distant future as a fan. For sure. Don't worry about it. You'll see me. <laughs> a finally very important question um, the content series the Niskin's Diaries has been one of our most popular videos every pre-season it needs someone else to take it over now who would you recommend in the current squad to take over that content series that's a good question mm. big shoes to fill you can pick really yeah, you can pick him. Any reason? 
I taught him well during my time here. <laughs> <laughs> Nisins, we appreciate you coming to chat to us. Um, no and problem. On behalf of all of us and all the fans, thank you for everything you've done over the last seven years. It's been brilliant having you at Fulham. Thank you, guys. Honestly, I never thank you well enough because uh, I enjoy every single bit of my journey here, like I said, and, you know, not being able to come here as a Fulham player, it's a bit, like, heartbreaking, but that's life of uh, football players, and, uh, yeah, you know, I know that many people, many fans, and even my teammate, because we've been texting each other during the... Um, during the holidays, they wanted me to stay. They wanted me to, you know. But at the end, we couldn't find uh, the agreement. And, uh, yeah, I needed to take a decision. So I took it. Yeah. Well, best of luck in whatever comes next. I'm sure it'll be a great success. And hopefully we see you back here soon. Thank you. Wait, one last thing. For the fans, honestly, thank you for the love that you, you showed me during my time here. And uh, I'll never forget you, Fulham forever.